Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Thank you. Hello. Brain of Britain today, and for the next few weeks indeed, comes from the Squire Performing Arts Centre in Nottingham. Our thanks go to them for inviting us and to you for joining us. With me here are four more potential Brains of Britain who'll be hoping their general knowledge might propel them all the way to the series final in a few months' time. Let's meet our contenders today. Hello. I'm Joe Cardwell, a Financial Services Manager from Litchfield. Hello, I'm David Edwards, a retired teacher from East Staffordshire. Hello, I'm Brian Johnson. I'm a statistician from West Midlands. Hello, I'm Janie Mitchell, and I'm an ESOL tutor from Shropshire. You're all very welcome. As usual, we have a bit of a mix of seasoned quizzes and people giving it a go for the first time. But Brain of Britain can be unpredictable, and anyone can win if they find themselves on a roll. There's a point for each correct answer and a bonus point for getting five right in a row, which can sometimes give you a very healthy lead. Good luck, everyone. Fingers on buttons, and here comes the first question for you, Joe Cardwell. The fictional character Trisha Marie Macmillan from Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is commonly referred to by what shorter name? Trillian. Yes. In 2023, a blue plaque was placed on number 46 Gordon Square in London to commemorate the artists Vanessa Bell and Duncan Grant. Unusually, the property already bore a blue plaque to someone else. Which economist, who often stayed at the house when he was in London, is named on that original plaque? John Maynard Keynes? Yes, the first Baron Keynes. 46 Gordon Square was the hub of the Bloomsbury Group. Which word for a once popular haircut can also refer to a heraldic star with straight sides and five or six points, or to someone from Arundel due to the local river's abundance for certain fish? Mullet? Yes. Other descriptions of that hairstyle include the Kentucky waterfall, the beaver paddle, hockey hair, or simply business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> In the Middle East, what kind of dish is a fatouche? It's the kind of stew. Mm, not really, no. Uh, David Edwards? A sausage? No. <laughs> yes, Jenny Mitchell? A salad. Yes, you're right. It's a salad of tomatoes, cucumber, crispy pita bread, etc. David Edwards, it come to you. In physics, which scientist gives his name to the constant which is the number of constituent particles, usually molecules or atoms, contained in one mole of a substance. Avogadro. Amadeo, Avogadro, yes. The two teams in Major League Baseball, whose names end in the word Sox, S-O-X, are based in which two cities? Boston and Chicago. That's the right answer. The Boston Red Sox and the Chicago White Sox. The world's largest frog, the world's largest heron, the world's heaviest insect, and the world's longest and heaviest spider are all named in honour of which biblical figure? Goliath? Yes, the giant killed by David in the biblical story. In episode three of a series of a British TV sitcom first aired in 1990, which character was outraged to find a dead cat in their freezer? Victor Meldrew? It was Victor Meldrew, yes, in One Foot in the Grave. The scene apparently prompted complaints from viewers. In the Royal Navy, the first watch covers the period between which two times on the clock? 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. No, I'm afraid not. Janie Mitchell? 4 and 6? Nope. Any more guesses? Joe Cardwell? 2 and 6? No. Brian Johnson. Uh, midnight and six. No, midnight comes into it, but that's the end. It's 8 p.m., 20 hours, until midnight. Brian Johnson now. Which Northamptonshire-born statistician, known for her research in analytic function theory, became the first female mathematician to be elected as a fellow of the Royal Society of England? <sighs> 
Florence Nightingale? No. Mm. Uh, David Edwards? Ada Lovelace? It wasn't, no. No more offers? It was Mary Cartwright. Janie Mitchell? Your turn. Quote, My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hemlock I had drunk or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past and Lethe Woods had sunk are the opening lines of which poem by John Keats? I think this is wrong, but Ode to a Grecian Urn? No. Oh, I know Dave, Ed- David Edwards. Ode to Autumn, if such a poem exists? No. Brian Johnson? Ode to a Nightingale. Is the right one. Yes, you've got the right ode. And that's the end of the first round. Everyone has scored here, which is always a healthy sign. Janie Mitchell, Brian Johnson, one apiece. Joe Cardwell, three. David Edwards, four. (laughs) Now, Joe Cardwell, there's some music for you now. 2024 marks the 40th anniversary of the formation of a band from Birmingham, which took their name from a 1960 American drama film starring Robert Wagner and Natalie Wood. When you've heard their debut hit single, Johnny Come Home, I'd simply like you to name them. Fine Young Cannibals. Yes, the 1960 film which influenced that name is called All the Fine Young Cannibals, inspired by the life of the jazz trumpeter Chet Baker. Released between 2005 and 2008 and adapted for a film series, the Twilight fantasy romance novels were the work of which American author? Stephanie Mayer. Mm Mm-hmm, yep. During World War II, which UK city joined together with Stalingrad to become the world's first twin cities? Birmingham. Wasn't Birmingham, no. David Edwards? Coventry. Yes, not far away. Coventry. There are approximately 40,000 twin cities across Europe today. Nottingham is twinned with several cities, including Ghent in Belgium, Harare in Zimbabwe, Karlsruhe in Germany, and Ljubljana in Slovenia. David, we come to you. In 2024, a geologist and Italian Renaissance art scholar named Anne Pizzorusso used her expertise to pinpoint the exact setting of a very well-known work of art, claiming that a bridge, mountain range and lake in the background recognisably place it at Lecco on the shores of Lake Como in northern Italy. Which painting? The Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa, alias La Gioconda, yes, by Leonardo da Vinci. Charlie Higson, Anthony Horowitz, William Boyd, Jeffrey Deaver, and Sebastian Falks have all written officially sanctioned novels continuing the work of which author? Ian Fleming? Yes. Lorna Linda in California, Icaria in Greece, the island of Sardinia, Nicoya in Costa Rica and Okinawa in Japan are the original five locations designated as blue zones. Can you tell me what it is that characterizes these five places? Uh, Unusual longevity amongst their inhabitants. That's quite right. The places with the healthiest and longest lived populations, identified by the American writer and explorer Dan Butner. Dating back Over 200 years and based in Strasbourg, the world's oldest international administrative body still in operation is concerned with the navigation of which river? The Rhine. The River Rhine. It's the Central Commission for the Navigation of the Rhine, created after the Congress of Vienna in 1815. By what name do we know the object first called the XY position indicator for a display system? as described in a 1967 patent filed by Douglas Engelbart. A mouse? A computer mouse? Mm. Five in a row. Bonus mark to you, David (laughs) Edwards. Right. Brian Johnson, it's your turn. 
And I'm going to bowl you a question about cricket. About bowling, indeed. Shane Warne's first delivery in the Ashes in 1993 became known as the ball of the century. Who was his unfortunate victim? Mike Gatting. Yes. And your near, near namesake, Mr Johnston, would certainly have got that one right too. A cartoon strip formerly drawn by Steve Bell in The Guardian. A Lindsay Anderson film about a boarding school rebellion and a Rudyard Kipling poem once voted the nation's favourite, all share what short title? If. Yes. London's oldest French restaurant takes its name from which speciality dish of its proprietor, now stereotypically associated with France? Lescargo? Lescargo. Snails, yes. Published in 2020 in a punning reference to an earlier occupation, whose autobiography is entitled Unspeakable? End of your time. Jenny Mitchell? Jonathan Ross. It wasn't Jonathan Ross, I'm afraid. No normal try. I think you may kick yourselves. It was John Burko, former Speaker of the House of Commons. Never mind. Jenny Mitchell. Which large linear earthwork that roughly follows the border between England and Wales is named after the Anglo-Saxon King of Mercia from AD 757 until 796 who's traditionally believed to have ordered its construction. Offers Dyke. Yes. What was the surname of the French husband and wife Robert and Sonia, painters who in the early 20th century were known for vividly coloured abstract works and were key figures in the movement known as Orphism? O-R... How are you spelling that, please? Uh, O-R-P-H-ism. <clears throat> Flaubert. Mm, no. <laughs> Yes, David Edwards. Martin? No. Nobody remembers them? No. Delaunay. Robert and Sonia Delaunay. Their son, Charles Delaunay, was a jazz discographer and critic and leader of the Hot Club de France. Right, end of the second round. And these are the scores. Janie Mitchell, two points. Brian Johnson, four. Joe Cardwell, five. David Edwards, 11. Hmm. Yeah, OK. All right. Regular listeners will know that we give our brains a bit of a breather at the halfway point in the contest. They can sit back and work as a team rather than as rivals in tackling a pair of fun questions supplied by a listener, hoping to beat the brains. The easiest way to send your ideas is by email to brainofbritain at bbc.co.uk, which you can do at any time. Listener John Summerfield did just that, and it's his questions which challenge you today. John's clearly a fan of vintage comedy. See how you get on with his first question. Who was the credited composer of the theme and incidental music for Hancock's Half Hour and musical director for The Goon Show from 1952 till its conclusion in 1960? Do you I would love all vintage for that. Could someone You're sing I'm it? Not the most vintage. <laughs> I couldn't possibly come up. <laughs> um, the name Max Geldre rings a bell. Does that does that ring a bell with anybody else? Not to me. Before I, my time, I'm glad I to was say. Thinking <clears throat> Wally Scott. Uh, happy to go with it. Yes, go with that. it. Go with it. I'm not. I'm not sure. I, 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 we'll go for Wally Scott. And that is your. What? Well, no, it's not considered a an answer. But, uh, <laughs> are you committing yourself to Wally Scott? I, I think you should go with the first answer. Sorry. Oh, well, they, always, they, yeah, well, I, I'm, they always say, go with your first answer. OK. We'll go with we'll, David. We'll go, we'll go with your answer. Right. I may be coming, going down in flames, but um, let's go for Max Geldry. It's Wally Stott. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Max Geldry would be... I'm, ter I'm terribly sorry. That was probably unfair, because I... I almost persuaded you not to say yeah. it, so uh, I'm going to give you that. Wally Stott was a self-taught musician and arranger who'd gained years of experience in British dance bands. And following on from that, here's John's second question then. What's the connection between Wally Stott and the Oscar-nominated composer Angela Morley, who wrote the music for The Slipper and the Rose and most of the score for the animated feature Watership Down in the 1970s? Mm. 
if, if they are actually related. Brother, sister, father, daughter. Uh, one would be from the 50s and the other the from 70s. the 70s. So um, possibly there's a, a generation mm. between them. But I but, think what we're saying is we're going to guess whatever we say. Yes. Father and daughter. No. They are the same person. The same person. Oh, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Walter Stott transitioned in the early 1970s and, as Angela Morley, continued a stellar career as an arranger for film and television music. She became the first transgender person to be nominated for an Academy Award and lived in the USA for 30 years before her death in 2009. There's a rainbow plaque to her memory at the BBC's premises in Leeds, her city of birth. So, thank you, and well done, John. They were very nearly equal to your challenge today, but not quite, so we'll be sending you a prize for beating the brains. What's more, our audience here in Nottingham will show their appreciation with this fortissimo round of applause. <laughs> So, that's the end of our interlude. It's time to get back to the serious business in hand. Fingers back on buttons. Let's resume with you again, Joe Cardwell. The Tatra Mountains within the Western Carpathians form a natural border between Poland and which other country? Russia. Mm, no. David Edwards? Slovakia. Slovakia is right, yes. And it's your turn. Here's some bird song for you from a July 2024 edition of Radio 4's popular strand, Tweet of the Day. Can you identify which bird brings the biologist and writer Tolga Aktas such joy? They tend to breed in open grassland, in uplands, on grazed grassland and large arable fields. Their calls to one another and their sheer existence is enough to make me feel content. I'm always amazed how happy I feel when I hear this song on my daily walks around my home in Gloucestershire. Skylark. Yes, it was the Skylark. In 2013, the Royal Society of Chemistry erected two blue plaques in Nottingham in recognition of the work carried out by Boots UK and two of its scientists into the research and development of which anti-inflammatory painkiller? Um, ibuprofen? Is the right answer. Plaques erected by the RSC are known as chemical landmark plaques. The two scientists were Dr. John Nicholson and Dr. Stuart Adams, who developed ibuprofen in the early 1960s. In 1960, which of the six Mitford sisters published her memoirs under the title Homs and Rebels? Jessica. Yes, known as Decker to the family, amongst whom she was the, the notably left-wing one. Jessica is right. In physics, what term is used for the steepest angle at which a granular material can form a pile without any additional grains sliding down the surface? Mm. Um, angle of settlement? No. Jenny Mitchell? Optimum angle? No. These are good tries, but not the answer. Brian Johnson? Um, equilibrium? Mm, no, no, right. The answer is the critical angle of repose. The angle of repose can be seen in the bottom chamber of an hourglass as sand falls naturally into a pile. Brian Johnson, which Yorkshire-born carpenter and clockmaker invented the marine chronometer in the 18th century to assist in determining longitude at sea? John Harrison. It was John Harrison, yes. In 2008, which city was the host of the first ever Formula One Grand Prix race to take place at night? Um, Singapore. It is the right answer. Well done. It was the inaugural Singapore Grand Prix. Several night races have been introduced since. A teenager called Edward Oxford was tried and found not guilty by reason of insanity after attempting to do what in 1840? Um, going over Niagara Falls. No. 
David Edwards? Assassinate Queen Victoria. That's the very, very caption I have of the card. Assassinate Queen Victoria. He fired shots at her unsuccessfully while she was riding in a carriage on Constitution Hill, pregnant with her first daughter. He was one of seven people who tried unsuccessfully to shoot her during her reign. Never knew that. Janie Mitchell, we come around to you again. The political philosopher Friedrich Engels confessed that prior to seeing one in Manchester, he believed which creature to be a hoax, dismissing it with the words, as if a mammal could lay eggs. Well, I don't know what it would be doing in Manchester, but I want to say platypus. Yes? You want to specify which sort of platypus? The Mancurian platypus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you this. It's the duck-billed platypus in, in its full title, but that's right, yes. Epicaricacy is the rarely used English equivalent of what German term for an emotion described by Arthur Schopenhauer as an infallible sign of a thoroughly bad heart and profound moral worthlessness. Ooh. Sounds like people I know. <laughs> um, sulking. No. Shaking of heads, nobody's trying this one. Schadenfreude. Oh. Other equivalents include the French jo joie maligne, the Danish skyfried, and the Latin malevolentia. And that's the end of another round. Here are the scores now. Janie Mitchell, three points. Joe Cardwell, five. Brian Johnson, six. David Edwards, 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. As we come to the final round of the contest, folks, Joe Cardwell, your turn. In 2024, which indie rock anthem by The Killers overtook Wonderwall by Oasis to become the UK's biggest selling single, never to reach number one? Mr. Brightside. Yes. 39 years after its original release, Wham's Last Christmas finally reached number one last year, 2023, so it no longer counts. In which of the British crown jewel regalia will you find the diamond known as the Great Star of Africa? The scepter. Yes, 530.2 carats cut from the Cullinan diamond which was presented to King Edward VII in 1907. The Hills of California, which opened in January 2024, is the latest play of which British dramatist whose successes also include Mojo and Jerusalem? No, I don't know. Okay. Brian Johnson? Uh, Jez Butterworth. Jez Butterworth. Right answer, yes. David Edwards now. On the 30th of June 2001, the former NASA astronaut Jeffrey A. Hoffman officially opened which museum and educational resource in the English Midlands to the general public? Um, the National Space Centre at Leicester. Down the road in Leicester, it says here, that's right. Founded in 1992 on the teachings of the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, what was the name of the transnational party that promised world peace through transcendental meditation? The Natural Law Party. Yes, which was disbanded in 2001. In Gilbert and Sullivan's comic opera, The Pirates of Penzance, the hero Frederick has been mistakenly apprenticed to a band of pirates because his hard-of-hearing nurse had mistaken what word for pirate? Pilot? Yes. A sad mistake it was to make and doom him to a vile lot. I bound him to a pirate, you, instead of to a pilot. Yes. Which battle of 1859 that left 40,000 dead and wounded with hardly any prospect of medical relief gave rise to the International Red Cross movement thanks to the accidental presence of a Swiss businessman who was appalled by the aftermath of the carnage. Oh. <sighs> no. No. Okay. Brian Johnson. Magenta. Wasn't magenta, no. Any more battles? No, no. Solferino. 
A battle in the wars of Italian independence in 1859. Jean-Henri Dunant of Geneva wrote a book called A Memory of Solferino, which ultimately led to the adoption of the first Geneva Convention and the formation of the Red Cross. Britain joined in 1870. And it's Brian Johnson's turn. Here for you is part of a January 2024 edition of Radio 4's The Life Scientific. Jonathan Van Tam, who came to widespread public attention during the COVID-19 pandemic, is telling presenter Jim Al-Khalili why he decided to leave his role as Deputy Chief Medical Officer. A question will follow. I worked until I felt that I had done what I needed to do which was to see the vaccine programme into the right place, see us into a safer place where the lethality of COVID-19 was more like seasonal flu than the virus we first encountered. And I do believe in working to live, not living to work. Professor Van Tam's efforts were rewarded in 2022 with a knighthood. But for what reason did he miss the investiture ceremony? Went to a football match. <laughs> no, Jenny Mitchell? Um, he had COVID. He contracted COVID, yes, and had to self-isolate. That's quite right. And it's your go. In the human body, what's the name of the main and largest artery? I only did plants for GCSE biology. <laughs> <clears throat> No, out of time. No guesses. Brian Johnson. Aorta? The aorta, oh, yes, which distributes oxygenated blood to all parts of the body. Bringing us to the end of this sixth heat of Brain of Britain 2024 with these final scores. Janie Mitchell, four points. Joe Cardwell, seven. Brian Johnson, eight. David Edwards, 19. <laughs> So congratulations, David Edwards, on what we can only call an emphatic win. We'll see you again at the semi-final stage later in the autumn. Warm thanks to our audience here in Nottingham and to you for listening. We'll be right here next week with four more competitors playing Brain of Britain. Join us then. Goodbye. <laughs>